Dear colleagues, um, thanks for joining us. Uh, those who are familiar, we are just giving one minute for all the participants to settle down so that we can have uh, appropriate uh, starting mode. Uh, and within a minute, we will start with our 90 seconds video, and then we will proceed with the rest of the agenda. So many thanks for your patience and take your time in the next couple of seconds and we will be starting in one minute or so. Thank you. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let me first show my screen, obviously. Uh, my name is Yunus Khan. I'm the Director of Global Advocacy at ICLE, Local Governments for Sustainability, and I'm uh, aiming to deliver this, uh, moderate this session and deliver the presentation in my capacity as also the focal point of uh, local governments and municipal authorities constituency to the UNFCC. Um, so this will be a, a one hour session, uh, the, 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 the participants are muted and this session is recorded. Uh, during the presentation, you're free to type in your questions in the chat box or Q&A session, uh, Q&A boxes that we can refer to. Um, we are usually trying to finish this uh, first introductory presentations around the, the first 30 or 40 minutes uh, so that we can leave room for discussions. Um, so therefore, I would like to uh, thank you for your patience in, in, in staying tuned for the, the, the presentation. There are have been cases in our monthly webinars. We had uh, participants from other institutions for, for the respective agenda items. But for this session, I will be alone. I will be mainly providing you the updates on the the logistics uh, negotiations and our, our, our preparations in in-person and uh, virtual preparation participation to COP26. Um, so with this, uh, I'd like to start to um, uh, start with the agenda. Uh, Julie uh, from AIMF, uh, our colleague, one of the members of the, the LGMA constituency, she already typed in her question about the video. Yes, I should have noticed that uh, and um, uh, explained this before. This was uh, a compilation that ICLE in its capacity as LGMA focal point have done last year on the fifth anniversary of the Paris Agreement. This was uh, also um, published in, in, in our uh, LGMA playlist uh, and it's also available in our, in our website. Um, so this was a, a very snapshot of the moment uh, and what has been afterwards uh, over the past five years. So uh, it's great to hear, uh, Julie, you liked it. And, and 
we encourage you to to uh, spread as well. Um, so uh, for for those uh, who are also new, we are using citiesandregions.org/cop26, uh, especially as our landing base uh, for the the, the 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 these information. And and this website is continuously being updated, so that you can also reach to other information uh, afterwards. Uh, and this this session recording will also be available on the web, uh, and presentation will be shared. Uh, I see a number of colleagues uh, in the in the in the participant list. So as we said, this is in fact the 21st webinar. Um, this is a monthly webinar. We are having this every year for, between the two COPs. Uh, obviously, for this year and last year, it's it's a combination. So uh, what we usually go is just from basics for those who come new. Why Paris Agreement is important for us, and then we go to the regular. Uh, what is COP and how we engage in that, uh, and then we proceed with the latest updates since our last webinars. So that's the structure of the webinar as well. So Paris Agreement, uh, obviously climate action, especially at the local level, did not start with Paris Agreement. We have been involved in this process since 1990s, even before the UN Climate Convention was adopted. And we were one of those who were driving this uh, ambitious action through our local Agenda 21 and other initiatives like Cities for Climate Protection, but uh, obviously, compared to UNFCC, the convention and the Kyoto Protocol, which was limited in scope, in time and in its capacity, Paris Agreement is really opening a new era. It's a new era for three main reasons. First of all, if you read the text, uh, there is a, a clear recognition that it is not anymore national governments. It is all stakeholders and including multi-level governance, uh, all levels of government. Second, it is a 1.5 degree goal that is very clearly stated there. And third, uh, the, uh, this is attached to climate neutrality commitment. So without you reaching the climate neutrality or 100% renewables, obviously there's no way to reach out 1.5. So there is an aspirational vision, but there's also a very quantified and very ambitious target. And most importantly, there is no annex in the Paris Agreement that every country are signing up to the same commitment. Obviously, their route, their, the way they will reach to this goals will be different because they are they are in different starting points. Uh, but the conclusion, the ending point is the same, that we will be reaching to a, a climate neutral world before mid-century. We would aim to inspire the 1.5 degree goal and we will work with all levels of government and all stakeholders. That's why we say that for the national government, obviously their first responsibility is to deliver the Paris Agreement and it starts with a new uh, national climate plan. Why? The existing or the first cycles of national climate plans, which is called NDCs, uh, was prepared, were prepared before Paris Agreement was signed. So none of the, the first wave, wave of NDCs were designed according to, to complement these goals. That's why we are always saying that towards COP26, the success starts at home. Every nation should bring new NDCs and it should be hopefully developed collectively with all local levels of government. For us, for local and regional governments, there is also a, another as, in, in, uh, important agenda because before Paris Agreement, climate action was a voluntary work. It was something nice. It was really for those who were on the front runner. Uh, but now, with the recognition in the preambular paragraph, it is our duty. Every goal of the Paris Agreement is also applying to local and regional governments. Therefore, we are inviting every nation to uh, every local and regional government in their climate strategies, in their urban strategies, to uh, commit to climate neutrality, declare climate emergency so that they can advance and they can align themselves much more co uh, collaboratively. And obviously uh, that they should kind of coordinate with national efforts and other stakeholders from the urban poor to the migrants, from, from those who are suffering with the, the terrible housing, but also those who are suffering the, the air quality. They should embrace this new world because they should see the benefits. So it is not just those who are developing technologies, but a collective a society should be getting the benefit of a new civilization. Therefore, they could come up with us so that altogether we implement this uh, new era. Climate Conference of Parties, it is 26th coming up. Uh, obviously, it is a, it's a cycle process every year. Uh, the country who hosts uh, usually are the political leader. So this was happened in Madrid the last time. So Chile has been the, the president of this process over these two years. Since Paris Agreement, we have a new process called High Level Climate Action Champion. In the case of uh, Chile now, we have the Minister Schmidt and, and Gonzalo Munoz as the champion and the president respectively. Whereas in the, in the incoming presidency, they prepare, they take their time 
to prepare the agenda for the, the event they will host or for the process they will host and that they will take the responsibility for the implementation. Uh, and the UK has been very reactive in the over this past couple of months, let's say 12 or 24 months. Uh, and, and they have developed you know, a number of innovations such as not just a, a climate action champion, but finance advisor, adv adaptation advisors, regional advisors. They have created several bodies, several councils, including some those with cities and regions. Uh, they have appointed, uh, sorry, David Attenborough as a people's advocate. Uh, so these are all positive things. Uh, you can still discuss uh, the effectiveness and, and it could always have been better. But I think the vision was uh, welcoming and, and, and it, was, it was something that we should be applauding. Um, they, they also, every year, the presidencies also put their own agendas. Uh, the, the, the four agendas is something like very basic, I mean, mitigation, adaptation, finance. But the fourth one is also very important, it's collaboration. And in that sense, uh, that's what we are encouraged because we are saying that collaboration also includes multi-level collaboration. So that is at the local level, national level, but also global in the UNFC space. I see four chat box messages. Just let me stop that. Um, uh, so uh, Eva is uh, sending the, 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 the position paper of CMR. Yes, we will come back to that. So um, the UNFCC advocacy uh, that we are um, uh, dealing with as the constituency of uh, local governments and municipalities. And by the way, I'm happy that we are encouraging, increasing in our membership. Uh, there are more and more uh, organizations being accredited to the UNFCC, but uh, obviously the LGMA is not limited only those in the bureaucratical accreditation, but also we're expanding to those who are not necessarily in the, in the process. Through our mailing list, through our activities, we are trying to make sure all networks of local union members that are committed to climate are part of it. Um, so what we do is that we usually regularly participate in year-round uh, negotiations, workshops. Um, these, of course, are, are halted because there's no decisions coming up, but several meetings have been taking place. Um, we have been participating to the extent possible. Uh, the presidency, because of this virtual uh, uh, elements, have introduced also this um, new consultations. Most of them were only for parties, but we tried to contribute uh, to the extent possible. And especially at the climate action level, uh, the champions and Marrakesh partnership have accelerated significantly uh, with, with kicking off race to zero, race to resilience, uh, the pathways and race to zero breakthroughs. These are the, the elements that we have been contributing ICLE and the rest of the LGMA communities in different hats and in different responsibilities. But uh, we are very happy to see the recognition of local underground in all these elements. Um, that is, I think, the key point. So now coming to uh, Eva, uh, we are uh, encouraging uh, since uh, the, the, the Madrid uh, that the, the logic was multi-level collaboration was our main aim. And, and we could say that uh, in part in Madrid two years ago, we were saying that we want to go towards a multi-level action. But now we want to say it is time for multi-level action and we want to elevate the, the positions uh, into two, four main areas. And of course, all the other thematic actions, we can we can still work on it. But we encourage all the LGMA community to be aware of this uh, discussion that we are jointly developing. First of all, multi-level should be the new normal, especially uh, putting a text in the agreement is something, but implementing is different. That's why every nation is asked to commit to climate neutrality 2050, so that national action is important here. Uh, therefore, uh, I will come to this in the next slide, but we want to make sure multi-level is embraced uh, collectively by the UNFCC community as a, a new um, a wave of uh, climate action in the second phase of Paris Agreement. But it is also important, not just for raising emission, ambitions of climate, uh, and climate ambitions of national government, but it is also very important the commitments that our members constituency, be it race to zero, be it race to resilience, we are very clear on that. None of those ambitious targets will be met without collaboration with local, global, and subnational and national partners. Therefore, multi level is not something for the national government, it's also something for us. So, that is a collective, uh, let's say, uh, vision that we have to develop, uh, be it um, 
the U.S. If you look at uh, the discussions, the, the the Senate is discussing this two trillion dollar budget. If this doesn't come, any city in the U.S. will have serious difficulties in reaching to these goals. Or look at the the, the floods that you have seen from from Vancouver to China. Nobody, none of the cities could come up with this with the, just the municipal budget. So it's very clear that we have to work together. And it is very clear, I will touch upon this in the, the elements of uh, ambition. Urbanization as a sector, we want to once again, especially on the Article 6 negotiations, uh, there's some progress. I will not go into the details in this one, but there are some texts coming up. So what we would like to encourage is that both our experience like Quebec, California, Tokyo, that they can play an important role in the emission tradings and at the most local and provincial level, or our members being host of those projects or processes. But more importantly, on the Article 6.8, which is the non-market mechanism, if we can em embrace that, a, a text that says that sustainable urbanization is a non-market mechanism, especially those in the developing countries could benefit from that, because we could say that if you dev deviate from business as usual, you can avoid a lock-in effect of uh, emissions so that you can reduce your reduction and this could contribute your NDC targets as well. Um, just uh, climate action, that should be also a guiding recipe for all of us. We know Glasgow, uh, Scotland, as the host cities and uh, regions, they have always been very active in the space. So we would like to make sure that that transition uh, or 1.5 degree goal is not just technocratic issue. It has a, a lot of social and and, and and, and economic factors and equity factors, but also different discussions like food, biodiversity, uh, or, or culture, gender, youth should all be part of this process. And finally, that is something that we would like to be very specific. We as LGMA, knowing that second phase of Paris Agreement is really important, we cannot continue this way of work. We have to be more robust. We have to be much more professional in thematic work, but also in the regional work. That these are the ideas that we should come up. This slide, um, I'm sharing with all of you as um, like a, a work in progress. And I would recommend uh, not to be quoted uh, because we are still discussing. Uh, this is the biggest, um, let's say, uh, uh, defining discussion of the COP26. Are we going ahead in the national ambitions? And if it is a yes, how much and how did we do this? Our claim is that those who countries who have made any increase in their ambitions have done this because they have been working with their level, multi-level collaboration. So they have been implementing multi-level collaboration. The, the logic is that whoever has worked with multi-level collaboration, definitely they increase their commitments or ambitions, but it may not be always the case that um, uh, there may be other elements who, who have contributed to that. But if you look at this, this is the interesting point, from global north, from global south. If you look at this chart, you can see around more than 60 countries who are now really officially have put on the table a more ambitious NDC. And, and we, if you dig into that, you can definitely see uh, contributions because they have worked with local engineers. Uh, I'm very happy ICLE has been part of it. Many partners have been part of it. And the CP CAP played a huge role in that, but it is not limited to those processes because there are countries who are not in the, in the CP, especially in the global north. Uh, but we can definitely say that, yes, there are much better uh, national plans compared to six years ago, and most of them, or at least on all of them, you can see the footprint of multi-level collaboration. I think that is one of the strongest messages we should be working with them. Uh, coming to just, just a recap, I told that this is a monthly webinar. Uh, over the past few weeks, uh, significant things have evolved. Uh, there in cities, uh, at obviously urban October, we're in an urban October. Uh, it's uh, full of activities from urban stakeholders. We have their cities at Ipley and Bonn and another uh, state of North Germany as well. This was particularly exciting because those who were in the climate emergency uh, action, we were very happy to, to get their experience and then multiply it with others so that we would pr present it to, to COP as well so that ambitious climate action, how can it be connected to commitments and to climate emergency and climate uh, multi-level collaboration? Uh, there are several proposals that we would like to convey to COP26 as well, and that will be helpful, I believe, uh, to the discussion. A week after Innovate for Cities, it was massive mobilization, 200 events in five days with 5,000 participants plus, um, and it will be resulting into a refreshed or revised uh, cities and climate research agenda. 
uh, biodiversity COP uh, has been convened in Kunming in a hybrid format. So there were some delegations on site and some delegations were connecting virtually. We are very happy that collectively cities, regions, and all the subnational governments have voiced uh, with the number of interventions on site. It was Iqlay's uh, East Asia director uh, based in China. Um, and um, virtually we had uh, commitments from the regions for committee of the regions, Iqlay's, uh, and, and from many of, uh, of partners. Uh, so these were all uh, providing good uh, outcomes on, on what we could expect if this was reflected into the climate negotiations. The reality is that the climate negotiation is not as good as the biodiversity in terms of eng engaging local and regional governments. Uh, therefore, Edinburgh process, we will look forward to them to bring more momentum and energy to, to Glasgow. Um, so let's focus on the logistics now. We are getting serious. There's less than 10 days left. Uh, one thing for sure, everybody's confused. I can comfortably say that um, I, I am one of those personally being in this space for a long time that I can always say that, okay, I know what is going on. But for the first time in my life, not just as Ikle, but all the whole climate cops, I am not sure what's going on. Uh, this is not definitely my personal fault, although I should, of course, make it much better always. But there is a clear confusion from the presidency, from the secretariat, uh, that, that the people are still not aware where we are going forward. Uh, one example, just you have heard two weeks ago, the, the red list of the UK was revised. So now those who are not allowed or those who were supposed to be going through um, compulsory quarantine, they don't have to do this. How can they manage in a couple of days time to shift uh, their visas and, and, and then to book their flights and increasing the expensive cost of accommodation is still a question so that just being uh, removed from red list doesn't guarantee your participation there. Secondly, again, the rules are changing. For example, uh, you or any participant are asked to have daily tests uh, and daily test uh, structure is also a variety. And now starting from 24th of October, this is changing so that you do not have to go through compulsory PCR tests on the second day of arrival. So that any day we are hearing a new information let alone, this is also connected to UNFCC. As of today, we don't know the map of the blue zone. We have still uh, not uh, been informed what's going on in terms of our access to the processes. There is some virtual elements are being introduced and we will see how we will be engaging in that. So the, the, the clear message is that you should be all prepared that if you have managed to get a blue zone badge, if you manage to get a visa, if you manage to get pay your flights, and you find a home under uh, under a roof uh, that is a decent place and a decent price, uh, in the morning of, of one of your days, you can receive in your phone or your laptop an email saying that, sorry, uh, COP26 Blue Zone is full, so we cannot let you in. So imagine the frustrations of all leaders and partners who are working tirelessly and if they face this situation. Therefore, honestly speaking, we are encouraging still that uh, as long as you don't have a real necessity, you can consider to participate via virtual platforms. And we will come to that. Luckily, the LGMA pavilion will also be virtual. So that is the biggest news. Let's go to more specific. Uh, any, any participants who receive Blue Zone, when they come to the registration desk of the UNFCC at the Stockholm Environment Center, Exhibition Center, they have to sign code of conduct. This was two code of conduct. This is two, these are two codes of, codes of conduct. One is the UNFCC, which is primarily focusing on harassment, sexual and others, uh, political uh, avoidance of any harassment. But the, there's a second one, which is new, new and that is for uh, mainly for COVID. So please share these uh, links with your delegation so that they are not surprised if they should sign this when they want to enter into the process. Second, uh, there is a number of uh, guidance from the UK, especially visa and other processes. Just to be clear, those who have blue zone badges, they will have free visa uh, visa fee waive for them. Um, there is also a clear uh, requirement that uh, maximum three days before you should have a, a test. And this could be as simple as a lateral flow device test. But this has to be documented so that you have this evidence so that when you come to the British border or UK border or the Scottish border, you show this uh, to the border gate. And, and before getting on 
before uh, getting on the flight, two days before, you have to fill the passenger locator form. So pre-test and passenger locator form, don't forget to do this before getting on your flight. Uh, and during the days, every day, every morning, everybody on the Blue Zone has to show a negative uh, lateral flow test and more information on site will come up soon. Um, I'm checking there are some new messages coming up. Um, Jan Francois from the City of Paris is, is also celebrating both submissions from Eva uh, and I think the discussion we have. Um, so, um, by the way, Jan Francois is the climate manager of City of Paris. This is not referred here, but we'd like to congratulate City of Paris being rewarded as uh, a climate leader in the space through the, the, the climate action plan of City of Paris. And the mayor Hidalgo will be joining the, the, the award ceremony on the 10th of no, uh, November, uh, along with several other cities like Danish a island, Sarumbro, uh, I may mispronounce, and we have a, a, a state from Mexico. These are the three leaders from local and regional governments who are awarded with the ceremony. So on, on the name of Jan Francois, we congratulate all of them. So, um, Yes, uh, we are talking about an orientation. We have to, whenever you, where, wherever you are going or committing to, just first of all, ask this question. Is it in the blue zone or in the green zone? This shapes how you can intervene and how you can connect. Um, in the blue zone, we have three big bubbles. We have the pavilion, we will come to that in a minute. Uh, we will have the UNFCC processes. I will come to this in that, and then there will be other pavilions. In the green zone, we have the immediate green zone of the UK, we will show it now. And then there's a variety of events in Glasgow and Scotland, uh, including Edinburgh. Um, so in the in the so in this links, uh, in, in the slide, we shared some links that could be helpful for you. First of all, the official agenda is available. Uh, interestingly, the official agenda lists the negotiation agendas then presidency agendas and champions agendas. This is happening for the first time. In the past, the action agenda was always under the prerogative of the, the champions, but now presidency has an additional agenda and sometimes there are overlaps, but there are sometimes differences between the champions agenda and the president's agenda. What it means, we don't know, let's not speculate, but this is a fact that the presidency and champions have separate agendas. Um, we have UNFCC side events. We are including this in the official UNFCC process because these side events are or organized in terms of the infrastructure uh, by the UNFCC Secretariat. These are for free, and you are able to be shown your, your outcomes in the UNFCC side event website. The good news, we have several networks who have already applied and get uh, uh, the, the, the uh, awarded with the slots. Uh, we have Climate Alliance, uh, we have uh, C40, we have uh, UCLG, ECLA, CMR, and Regions 4. So the last four is joining, uh, and the Climate Alliance having their own event, um, and, and um, C40 is joining with JZ. Climate Chance is also having their own event on the 11th. So we have a relatively group, a good group of uh, networks visible in the UNFCC track. Uh, we will go to the pavilion, and there are other pavilions. Obviously, this year, as I said, I still don't have the map. If someone has the map of the blue zone, I would be very happy, but I don't know. So we don't know how many uh, pavilions are taking place. Uh, this is important because uh, there was a lot of uh, pavilions in the past where we were able to intervene. Because of this extreme high cost and the extremely difficult uh, management process, we are hurt number of partners, uh, especially those from NGOs or those from coming from those who do not have that much resources have, have had to decline their pavilions and we are very sorry for them. Um, so um, at the moment, as I said, what we know, there are agendas in the Euroclima pavilion, there is in the EU pavilion, German pavilion, Japan pavilion, um, and the CP pavilion, uh, so many of those going on, but it's, it's still not clear uh, which ones uh, are, are their agendas and US Center, for example, their agendas are not yet announced. This means actually that this is the last webinar we are having before COP officially, but stay tuned for our updates, especially from our mailing list, and then we'll come to the multi-level action program as well, so that we continue to keep in touch. In the green zone, uh, the UK, the green zones are immediately next to the blue zones. Blue zone comes from the logic of UN, has the color of blue. 
So anything under the blue zone is under the authority of the UN. Uh, this is not UK territory anymore. It is a UN territory. The UK, UN rules apply. Uh, but immediately outside the gate, it is still the UK, it is Scotland, it's Glasgow. So the UK Green Zone has its list of events uh, that are very, very interesting, really very um, in, in try, inspiring uh, experiences, especially from across the civil society, uh, including the uh, networks of local and regional governments. So we commend them. Um, but in order to attend this, you have to get a ticket. It doesn't have any compulsory vaccination or compulsory uh, testing procedure. It doesn't ask for UNFC's accreditation. So anyone who happens to be in Glasgow can go and visit there if there is space available. Because I heard uh, some tickets are also just sold out. And there is no payment, but it's just a tracking. So be aware of that. Glasgow City Chambers, you heard a lot from our partner, uh, Duncan. Uh, they are doing a very fantastic work in opening the doors of city chambers from faith communities to justice uh, warriors, from trade unions, of, of course, local energy governments. So there will be a series of events, but also in the whole Glasgow. And Scottish government also has its lighthouse. Uh, we would like to get their uh, information soon. And there's so many events taking place in Edinburgh as well, even in Edinburgh Castle. Edinburgh Parliament, this is the official administrative capital of Scotland, uh, so that you can expect a number of uh, events being there. Uh, for example, under two coalition official General Assembly is in the, in the, in the Edinburgh. Um, so again, when you are invited to any event, don't forget to ask where it is. <laughs> um, COP is not just side events. COP is not just showcasing. It's a negotiation. That's why it's so difficult. And in the negotiations, we as LGMA have our intervention opportunity. These are mainly two minute statements. Um, there are also opportunities where we can submit documents to the negotiation agendas. The, the, the most basic one, because at the, those who are familiar with the COP atmosphere, uh, these slots uh, can be announced, but can be canceled in just one, five minutes before. Or you may wait for five or six hours until the announcement comes up saying that, okay, now we're starting but although it was scheduled six hours ago. So interventions at, at the planners is not easy. Intervention that contact is even harder. Uh, but what we know, we have an opening in the 31st of October to the COP. We have an opening to the subsidiary body sessions. We have um, open dialogue in the middle of the week, first week. We have closing of the uh, subsidiary bodies. And then we have high level intervention, high level segments. Uh, and we have the closing. Uh, you, here you can see, we'd like to uh, give um, the, the possibility for our partners in the city of Glasgow or Glasgow City Council, Scottish government to take pioneering role. But the other all the slots would also be open for LGMA members. And the closing statement, we would like to encourage that it should be delivered, it can be delivered by uh, one of our members from Africa because Africa will be hosting the 27th COP. And at this stage, we are very likely expecting to have Ralga, either Secretary General or President of the Rwandan Association of Local Governments. Um, for the high level segment that will propose uh, First Minister of Scotland, uh, Ms. Nicola Sturgeon, um, and all the other slots, we can discuss uh, how we can split among our delegations. Now, coming to the uh, pavilion agenda, this is the last uh, five minutes I want to spend. Um, yes, this was a, a, a remarkable experience again. Just to recall, we had hosted uh, a Blue Zone pavilion for the first time in 2009 at COP15 COP in Copenhagen. This was remarkable because for the first time in the Blue Zone, local energy government, we had 1,200 delegations and it was everyday flow sessions. Then, obviously, Copenhagen was a failure in terms of logistics and political. So after Copenhagen, there was this concept of um, green zone and blue zone. Under these conditions, we had uh, green zone pavilions, especially in Paris, in, in Bonn, in Marrakesh, uh, and, in, and, and even in, in South Africa, I guess. Um, um, so this time we're in the blue zone. That's the uniqueness. Uh, and we will see how it will uh, uh, help us. Um, uh, the logic was that we want to connect to the national government. That is the most priority. This doesn't exclude anything at, happening at the Glasgow uh, or outside the, the Green Zone. We are grateful, first of all, to Scottish government. Once again, 
if Scottish government was not so much solid behind this process, we would not have this pavilion. Uh, therefore, both financially, but more importantly, politically, in all these difficult moments, we have received a solid support from Scottish government. So we express our deepest gratitude. Um, and they also helped us also, especially in relation with the, the pavilion management, as well as the, 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 the raising the necessary funds for that. So we, we are to, uh, around 80% uh, re receiving the financial contributions from the Scottish government, but we have opened the space as, as a kind of a crowdsourcing that we have experienced in the past years. So we are grateful for our partners who are mobilized financial resources. So they contributed to, the, uh, to, to, to make sure that this pavilion with its physical, virtual, and, and, and other elements are, are there. I don't want to count all the names, but these are all, all, all respected partners. And it's also nice to see diversity, first of all, from north and south, uh, from networks. Um, and we also have partners, especially, uh, that have been using those slots that are being offered by the Scottish government. Uh, so we also would like to thank them a lot. Uh, they also diversify the, the whole pavilion. And, and now, if, if, if you look at that, this is the physical, uh, let's say, uh, outlook. Uh, it is a space for uh, 100 meters square. Uh, it is accommodating 30 seats, 35 seats. It's five on the podium. Uh, it is an open space. It's a transparent space. Um, there will be silent headsets uh, that there will be people speaking to the mic and people will listen. Uh, it will be fully online broadcasted uh, or web streamed. Um, and um, it will be uh, also... Um, uh, Time to time, uh, we will use the, the screens for our partners to display their documents uh, or information. Uh, there's a small meeting room, but this is mainly for administrative purposes. We do not recommend you to expect this as a, as a meeting room for your bilaterals as such. Um, so that, that is how it is created. Um, as we said, this will be virtual as well. And um, the the virtuality will be managed through a platform called Hopin. Um, and, and I'm happy to inform you that as of today, this platform is open for registration. In the next couple of days, we will also upload all these um, um, information on the, the calendar, which we will see this soon. But you can at the moment already register yourself so that any event that is taking place on site in Glasgow, if you are connected to the Hopin platform, you are able to watch it live and you are able to contribute through the Zoom infrastructure that will be shared to the panelist speakers that, uh, that you can also be connecting to this. So uh, therefore, we, we encourage you to ensure your registration. We are working heavily on our communications products and, and my colleague Ariel will be helping you and that both to our hosts and partners but also those who want to have more information. Let's once again, uh, the, the success of, of this pavilion is not only for those who are mobilizing but in person or physically, it is a collective success. You would see now that the, the agenda is, is broad enough that we can all have our words into this process. Once again, uh, the first three days is a bit very challenging because uh, for example, 31st of October, pavilions are closed, but we will have uh, a celebration of World Cities Day. We will have a press conference. Starting from 1st of November, that negotiations will continue. Um, and then for every agenda of the presidency, we have also followed with additional topics so that this can be discussed in our interventions, in our events. Uh, I know this is not very readable, um, but uh, just as a snapshot, what I can take you through is that there are Two events for us, uh, high level, mainly uh, the, the the press conference that we will be convening on, on the 31st of October. This will be the moment where we'll be conveying our messages and we will make sure the climate community hears about cities and regions and collaboration and urbanization. Uh, obviously, there will be so many press conferences, you can imagine it will not be easy, but uh, for the first time in the history, the 31st of October, World City Days is, um, uh, over, um, overlapping or coinciding with a climate COP. And for us, 31st of October is not opening just two days, but in fact, it is opening a new era of multi-level collaboration. That's why we want to make this uh, success. 
on that day in the evening, we are talking with Scottish government. We would like to come in a, a light social gathering at the lighthouse. It is still not confirmed, uh, but we, we thought it would be a good start for the whole um, two weeks. Um, on Monday onwards, we have events. We are very happy that First Minister of Scotland, Nicola Sturgeon, will be joining the high level opening at 4 p.m. We as ICTA will already start some discussions. And so the rest of the, the, the days, you can see that every slot is filled up. I mean, except one session, uh, and I'm talking around 70 plus events, 70 plus sessions. I'm proud and I'm very uh, happy to, to tell you that all the slots are now booked by partners with their very interesting events, very interesting announcements. We are very confident that this is the base. This is the house of subnationals at the UNFCC at COP26. So congratulations to all our partners. Uh, and the, the, on the last day, you would see that at 7 p.m. we will be welcomed by city of Glasgow City Council at the Glasgow City Chambers through a reception for LGMA. Uh, unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions, we are limited with a capacity of 100 plus. So uh, therefore, uh, the, the file that we have shared with you to LGMA membership, please fill in this file so that we can track who is able to join. And if needed, maybe we may have to make some sacrifices that not everyone may be able to join this. So please help us to reach out to the right partners uh, and, and that the right delegations so that they are, if they are able to be joining us, they, 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 should, they are more than welcome to, to join us. We will continue our daily briefings. Uh, during the lunchtime, we will have multi-level action dialogues for specific regions. We will have US, Canada, uh, Latin America, Europe. Uh, we will have Africa with uh, Commons SA. We will have South Asia and Global South. I'm very happy, especially for the Global South, to have this opportunity even though they were not too much present in terms of physical presence, there is a strong visibility of the Global South in our agenda that shows the solidarity of the LGMA. Um, I think with this, uh, I am concluding my, my presentation. I see there were several already uh, notes now. Let me start to open the floor um, to both the contributions, um, uh, and uh, inputs, and, and I'm more than happy to ask uh, my colleague Patricia to open this so that you can intervene verbally. Um, so let's recall, uh, Eva has shared on the chat box position papers of CMR Platforma in, in, in six key messages. I hope they are consistent with the overall core target of LGMA. You can find them in the link and we will share this in our, in our files and the LGMA updates. Um, uh, and, and we are very happy Eva is also embracing the multi-level. Jan Francois has made some comment. Um, um, yes, especially if, uh, that we are happy. Congratulations, Jan, once again. Um, uh, it will award all local climate action plans that we made, all of us, all the world, 10 connection of different networks, because everyone inspired us and we copy paste good initiatives from all their plans. This is a very nice uh, feedback uh, and message from Jan Francois. I invite all our partners to to convey their direct messages to Jan Francois as the manager of the climate uh, strategies of city of uh, Paris, of course, to Mayor Hidalgo and all the deputy mayors, the council of city of Paris. So as fully agreed, uh, Jan Francois, this is symbolic. It is a reward for all ambitious climate action that, that we are bringing the, the, the good message to the COP. Uh, there is, um, uh, inputs on the Q&A box. I'll try to go through them as much as possible. Um, Susan, City of Bonn, uh, Susan Nolden, does testing also apply to immunized person? Uh, we have to check. Uh, Susan, I, I'm not so sure of it. We have to check. Uh, Marina from Icle, Africa. Um, from whom can I confirm the time of our common, common SSA? Uh, so Marina, uh, Joe in our office has already started reaching out to the partners. Uh, we are mainly connecting to Kate. So it would be good to connect with uh, Joe and, and Kate as well. Uh, you can ask all your questions um, to them uh, for practical planning of the, the sessions in the pavilion. Julie from AIMF, once again, um, I'm not so sure to understand. Are we going to be allowed to access the Blue Zone on the 31st to take part? to the launch of the Poland press conference. Okay, uh, Julie, thanks for getting back to this point again. On the 31st, the Blue Zone is open for negotiations only. There's no side events. 
on the negotiation and the pavilions are closed. So there's no event at the pavilion on the 31st. The press conference is at the media center where participation is only limited to the media accredited partners and um, uh, those who are attending to the press conference. Because it's a 30 minute slot, it's, but we have to be realistic that we, we will not be able to accommodate all, but we're aiming to have at least voices from Latin America, Asia, Europe, uh, America, and one national government. Uh, and this will be webcasted. Um, uh, but we could we could stay in touch in terms of uh, how we can make sure the message is going further. Um, Carl, Carl Wright, Carl is a great colleague of us from Commonwealth Local Government Forum. He's now representing Canterbury. Uh, and, and Canterbury also has a, has a strong delegation and they are coming with, with very interesting inputs to the Green Zone and others as well. Um, uh, Maria Gonzalez recording, yes, it will be available. Um, Neda from Barcelona, greetings Neda, it's always good to hear you. Um, thank you very much for the support. Could we have any invitation for Deputy Mayor and Councillor of Climate Emergency? Uh, uh, so LGMA Pavilion, uh, Neda, I will get back to you because especially the session on eco-mobility on the 10th morning, I assume it will be particularly very relevant for you because of the Paris, sorry, Barcelona super blocks, uh, which was particularly addressing to the um, traffic related emissions and, 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 and pollution. So uh, we would be very happy to have Deputy Mayor uh, Janet Sands. We, we are, we're working with her for a long time and the councillor uh, there. Um, other events, uh, participation is open. You don't need to ask for an invitation. If you have a Blue Zone badge, you can come in and get through and join us. Uh, but for speaking roles, definitely we have to invite you. And um, there is also another event with uh, COSLA, UCLG, CMR, IT and UNABITAT on the 11th, on the, the city's built and run day, uh, starting from uh, 11.30 onwards. This will be a session with, uh, with the Global Task Force. Barcelona as, as the host of UCLG will also, I think, would be very, very welcome to, to join there. Um, there is another session on the, again, on the transport day, 10th of November. You're lucky because, as I said, Barcelona is very, very um, prominent uh, offering some solutions. So let's see. Um, uh, so bear with us. We'll get back to you uh, on, on that. And thanks for your perseverance that even though lack of response it doesn't upset you that you're able to to stay in touch and, and we appreciate your your leadership once again um rodrigo from uclg hi rodrigo thanks for joining um thank you for the useful information any insights on the negotiations among parties any issues we should pay special attention um honestly speaking it is um this year is a bit unique uh, the the uh, subs there but it, discussions, I mean, there are texts, but they are all non-text. So it doesn't exist because there was no subsidiary meeting taking place. So it's a bit really confusing. I am, as I said, this is one of those areas that I, for the first time, I'm lost in translation. Uh, one of the biggest concerns is that there is a huge likelihood that when the negotiations take place, the observers may be asked to part follow through virtual platform. And that is what we were always saying that, look, the UK, unfortunately, always saying that, oh, this is an in-person, this is an in-person. But practically, this is an in-person for some negotiators, and this is a virtual for most of the observers, especially in the negotiations area. So let's also be realistic on that. Uh, for us, the biggest discussion would be the outcome document, the, the Glasgow Declaration or Communique, to have multi-level as a phase there phrase there. Um, article 6 is the second one. There are important discussions on, for example, Article 6 of the Convention, which is Action for Climate Empowerment, which we are providing a huge input as well. Um, there is a new initiative on innovation. There are new initiatives or, or uh, progress on innovation hub, uh, sorry, capacity building hub. Um, loss and damage will, of course, be very important. I know in, in, in urban community, we have a number of partners who are very active on the migration issue. So these are the topics we could follow, like Santiago Network. Um, but as I said, I'm a bit far away from this and let's continue in touch, stay in touch so that we follow these negotiations together uh, all, and, and we collectively raise our positions as appropriate. Exactly, Patricia is saying that if you want to intervene verbally, we still have time. Um, 
so that you can also speak uh, and you can turn on your camera and we can hear and listen to you as well. Um, so feel free uh, to, to speak up as well. Alfredo from Coalition for Urban Transition. Hi, Alfredo. Um, I heard rumors that remote participants will also need a badge, yes, or blue zone virtual hybrid events. This doesn't make any sense to me, but wouldn't be a complete surprise. <laughs> Do you know anything about it? Uh, Alfredo, you're absolutely right. This is not a common sense. This is negotiations. <laughs> so I can just comment on the sense that UNFCC has a system now. It is on the website called COP27, sorry, COP26 platform. So anyone who wishes to watch the negotiations, um, they should be registered also as a delegation. The logic is that um, uh, it's a session, negotiation session, so it cannot be publicly broadcasted, but it can be open for any accredited delegation. Therefore, the logic is that uh, it is, yes, uh, in order to watch this, you still, you still have to have a blue zone. But obviously, to watch this, just the access to internet is enough. But the logic of negotiation is that the participants are registered. That's the reason why they are putting the blue zone accreditation as a must for this uh, process. Uh, I, 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 I fully agree, but let me not comment further. <laughs> what is the best way to get blue zone passes for one of our speakers uh, on 3rd of November, uh, core city sessions, um, Sylvia, um, are you from the Core Cities Network? Um, I mean, we we have been hearing that there are a number of uh, badges uh, still being finalized. Um, maybe you can have a discussion with partners uh, in the UK uh, and let's follow up maybe later on. I can try to help you, but there's no guarantee uh, as such. Serafin, Kosla, great to see you. Great to hear from you. Um, just to thank you, Eunice, for all the work and putting this together against so many of us. Thanks, Serafin, for all your support. We will look forward to our part, particularly on the City and Regional Day. We have a meeting with Alok Sharma, wow, on Thursday, where we will once again try to drive the messages that we have co-produced at LGM as Educate for Negotiation. Just one question. Is the public still open on the 12th too? Yes, uh, um, Serafin, I forgot this, but if you look at the chart, you can say that, you can see that, especially on the 12th morning, we will have a live connection to Brussels, to the U European Committee of the Regions a conference on uh, local, uh, uh, Green Deals Go Local, or Glocal, Glocal as the abbreviation. Um, we will be checking that if the Vice President Mina Arve, Mayor of Turku, can connect from Glasgow to this session live, virtually, to give some latest updates from, from uh, the negotiations and also what's, uh, what has happened. Uh, at the moment, we do not expect to have more events. Very likely around lunchtime, we can have a, like a closing event. Um, officially, we have to hand over the pavilion on that night, uh, but negotiations may continue, obviously, we don't know yet. Um, so 12th of November, pavilion is still open. If you would like to have any events, we can schedule it. So feel free to connect to us. Good. Um, yes, we'll talk with Sylvia later on. Um, I think we have responded all input or at least gone through all the comments. Feel free to just just turn on your mic if there's anything that is missing, uh, anything that we have forgotten, anything that you would like to contribute. Um, as I said, it is 10 days and a lot of things can happen. One last point that I must confess, uh, all these months about this red list and blue zone, green list, blue zone list, whatever, umber list, you may hear from media that as of today, globally, UK is one of those countries who has the highest number of COVID uh, cases. I don't know whether it is highest in terms of casualties or losses of human life, but in terms of um, cases. It is one of the highest. It is among the highest in the UK since March 2021. So obviously UK is not the safest place on earth in terms of COVID, let's say, pandemic. 
Therefore, we recommend all the participants, be it vaccinated or not, make utmost attention to your personal health so that you can help the safety and, and, and uh, uh, health of, of other participants as well. It is still possible anything can happen. In case there is uh, any major number of, let's say, I mean, once you are, let me recall, every day you will have a lateral flow test, which is just a very simple one. If this turns in negative, you will be able to come in. If it is positive, you are asked to go to your hotel, you are asked to get a PCR test in the second day. And if it is negative, then you can be allowed out. If not, you have to be there for 10 days. Um, obviously, th there will be some costs related to this. Imagine that the second week on this Wednesday, you are tested positive and that you have to stay for 10 days. How, who will pay the seven more days? Uh, it's not clear. UK said that they have a solidarity fund, but they say this is for eligible participants. I don't know whether they're criteria. Um, and if this number of cases where positive COVID has increased in number, what does it mean to the negotiations? Will they give a break or, or stop? We don't know. So as of today, uh, anything is possible. So we encourage you to stay tuned. Um, we will work with Ariel, my colleague Ariel, who's our communication director, to enhance our communication channels, both publicly in terms of social media, but also internally. Very likely we will issue several, um, I mean, daily briefings will come. Um, uh, that will be shared to the participants, the, like a summary of the discussions. But we will continue to keep our internal LGMA mailing list as the source of this kind of uh, confidential information that you don't have to always, or you cannot even uh, share publicly. So there will be multiple channels and definitely we will uh, create several, I think, groups on um, WhatsApp or Telegram. We'll get back to that. Um, and uh, through this opportunity, let me go back to the other slide once again to all partners whose name are here. I may have been forgetting some names. Uh, if, if this is the case, please forgive me. These are still work in progress. We didn't put the logos because we're still working on the, the final uh, logo uh, display. Um, but we would like to thank once again Scottish government, um, all the partners who contribute technically and financially, and all the partners who contribute by convening uh, an exciting discussion at the pavilion. And with this, I think we can say that we are coming to the end. If there is no burning issue, I see, see some some chats coming up. Uh, Will from Core Cities UK, um, thanks, thanks, uh, Will, and, and yes, we're excited to have uh, Core Cities events on the 3rd of November. Uh, will daily briefings be online? Uh, Susan, no, that's a good question. Yes, we have scheduled it on the pavilion. So our aim is that this will be made available online. Uh, that's our purpose. Um, um, yeah. With that, I'd like to thank you all. Um, maybe we can still save some two minutes uh, for your agendas. Um, and through this opportunity, I'd like to thank all partners who have been working in this process over these two years, um, all our guests who contributed our webinars. Um, for sure, um, we are much better off compared to where we left in Madrid in terms of our progress. But the reality is that it is not enough and it is it has to be much better it has to be much faster and it has to be much more broader and that is what cop is for hopefully uh, that by the time cop is finishing we will say that yes this was worthwhile and whatever comes out of cop it will only strengthen that this time for multi-level action has come and that there's no way back and the aim is to spread this to all around the world and every, every city, every region, and every country embraces this. Um, yes, uh, climate change, uh, Romain, their agenda is also updated on their website. We will circulate these. Um, Ronan Dante, we will like, welcome him um, in the, the sessions. Um, so, Kirsty, Kirsty from Africa.
We have to get a COVID test every day while at COP. Yes, but this is not the PCR test. This is the simple lateral flow test. That's very easy. And this will be provided, this kit will be provided by the UK. And if we test positive, we have to quarantine for 10 days. I, I think they would first like to get a PCR test. And then if PCR test is negative, then you may be left out as far as I understand. Um, we have to check once again. Okay. Fantastic and take care, stay safe. I look forward to continuing in touch, not through webinars very directly, but mails, but also from the briefings on site. Um, I will be there for full two weeks, hopefully. Um, yesterday I booked my flight as well. And um, so it's, it's an exciting moment in, in time and uh, let's hope that it will all be for, for better. Uh, Rodolfo Canete, is there any detailed program of activities and speakers in LGM equivalent? Uh, Rodolfo, once you get into the pop in, uh, you will be able to see you will be able to see uh, speakers list provided that partners have it uh, available to us. Therefore, um, we would expect all the partners who are convening an event at the pavilion will continue to communicate their own um, dissemination through their own channels. So they are not limited to the out, uh, announcement from us because it's, it's very hard, especially for this limited time to make sure everything. So if, if, if it was a typical, like an annual conference there in cities where we have full control from the beginning, you would see that everything is there. But the COP conditions are very, very difficult. So I cannot guarantee that every speaker will be fully there. Uh, but what we have done yesterday to the LGMA mailing list, we have circulated the list of uh, leaders from local and regional governments um, that is planned to be arriving in Glasgow. We didn't put the exact dates there. Uh, we would uh, make this also available like a downloadable document, at least from the political leaders or higher senior managers, you can see uh, and those partners who are working with those networks, uh, those networks or partners who are working with those cities, they may provide more detailed answer about when this person is available. Um, so that that is how we can maybe handle the process. Thanks for your patience. Uh, unfortunately, it's not ideal. I know that, um, but uh, let's leave what we have because it's really a challenge. I mean. Um, the conditions changing every day is really uh, making all of us in a difficult situation. Okay, Samantha from Bristol. Thanks, Samantha. We can look forward to seeing Mayor Reese and the Bristol delegation as well. Uh, so thanks a lot and, and we'll stay in touch.